This is the stormwater and flood control utility presentation for fiscal years 2015 and 2016. Stormwater and flood control utility was established on March 20th, 2014. And first fiscal year of operations was FY15. Required city council providing information relative to the work, and that is what brings me here this evening. So this, uh, the FY presentation to council was not given due to the DPW director vacancy, so this will represent a combined presentation for FY15 and FY16. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the work we're doing uh, since we're sort of in mid-FY17 as well. The first slide shows FY15 revenues. Um, we have fees, interest. Interest is uh, for late payments of fees. And we have an item for stormwater permits. Stormwater permits are fees that are paid for stormwater management permits for residential, commercial, or industrial development. Next slide is for FY15 expenditures. Um, first line item, PS is salaries, OM is operations and maintenance, OOM represents other than ordinary maintenance, which would be captured as capital projects, and then we have a line item for indirects. So similar slides for FY16 with a couple of additions. Uh, we have the fee item, and then we have a, a line item for liens. And liens were fees that were due in a prior year. And then the interest line here would actually represent interest for um, both fees that were not paid in FY16 as well as liens, which were fees that were not paid in a previous year. We also have an additional line item here for our stormwater study fees. So this line item represents payment that the city received for work to relocate drainage related to a construction project on Pleasant Street. That's the relocation of the Market Street book at the, um, at the lumber yard. And I'll talk about that a little bit later and what DPW's involvement is in that. This money has since been changed to a grant fund, so it's no longer commingled with the enterprise fund. But it shows up here in this slide because this is how it was originally accounted for. And this slide shows FY16 expenditures. So uh, same structure as the FY15 expenditures with salaries, operations and maintenance, capital projects. Um, notable addition here is the debt, principal and interest. So we bonded $377,000 for work on the levy system in June of 2015. Money was borrowed for 10 years and this represents the first payment. This graphic will sort of show you year over year FY15 versus FY16. Um, it, item of note here is that it, if you look at OLM, other than ordinary maintenance, capital projects, what you will see is the expenditures that we made in FY16 are significantly higher than the expenditures that were made in FY15 as the utility has started to ramp up. Credits. So we have, uh, the billing list includes 11,185 properties. And we have approved credits for 1,051 of those properties for a total annual value of $78,449. So that's a fairly significant percentage. Um, there are several different types of credits that are issued. Uh, I'll give you some examples of the most common ones. Um, we have protected land credits, so for example, if your property would be in uh, Chapter 61, um, this applies to 578 properties for a total of $35,036. Um, another common credit would be for low income or for senior needs based credits. Um, and we have issued 254 low income credits and 107 senior needs based credits. We also issue credits for private stormwater systems, and we have issued 112 of those for a total of $20,456. A 
So this slide shows, uh, the chart on the right-hand side shows uh, some of the salaries that are paid out of this utility. And it is, it, there are portions of 33 salaries that are paid, um, the equivalent of 10.78 full-time positions. And as you can see from the chart on the right, these salaries range from mine to engineering staff, to clerks, to um, the folks in the field who drive the trucks and clean the catch basins and, and, um, and, and actually perform the work in the field. Um, this picture, um, by the way, is um, some folks who, um, who work uh, under the direction of the highway superintendent, and this is at the uh, trial deployment of the West Street stop, stop log structure, uh, which I'll discuss in an upcoming slide. This slide shows some of the indirect costs that are associated with the utility. Um, just kind of hit the uh, high points here. Um, there's uh, employee benefits, so prorated share of the city's contribution to health insurance. Um, it also includes workers' compensation, Medicare, and retirement. Um, the utilities also charge for costs related to um, the treasurer and collector's office, and IT, legal, um, city council. Um, and other costs include uh, uh, portions of general liability, property, and vehicle insurance. So I'll start out with, a, with an overview of, of kind of day-to-day -day operations and, and maintenance of the existing system. So it, it's important to start out with, with sort of an understanding of the permit that we're working under, where we are, um, we're working on a permit from the EPA that's called the MS-4 permit. I'm sure um, folks are, are familiar with this. Um, but there is a new permit that has been issued um, that will become effective on July 1st, 2017, so five months from now. And it is, uh, the, the purpose of this is regulation of pollution in stormwater. And this permit has new requirements that necessitate active management of stormwater and related infrastructure. So, the first step is, is that we need to submit our notice of intent to the EPA, and that needs to be submitted by September 29th of 2017. And this will be drafted by the DPW, and it's our official submission that states we acknowledge that we are covered under this permit and that we will meet its requirements, which I'm about to describe to you. Um, we also need to submit a five-year stormwater management plan by July 1st of 2018, and this will address our infrastructure and our plans for maintaining our infrastructure, as I will also note in the following slides. So there's, there's six kind of pieces to this permit, um, and, and they're, they're here in bullet point form, and I'll, I'll talk just briefly about each of them. So there's, there's six main things that we need to do to be in compliance with this permit. Um, first is a public education and outreach piece. We need to deliver targeted messages to residential, business, commercial, institutional, developer, and industrial customers, um, we, we would say that, or, or residents rather. Um, for example, um, if we had a gas station, um, we would target a message to our gas station or fuel depot type businesses where we stress the importance of having a spill prevention program that is, that is actively managed and, and completely up to date. Second piece of this is public involvement and participation. Um, we will provide our stormwater management program draft for public review and comment. Third is the illicit discharge detection and elimination program. So a big piece of this is sampling our outfalls. Um, it is inventorying all of our SSOs or sanitary sewer overflows. Um, written, pro written protocols for, for locating and removing illicit discharges. Fourth piece, construction site stormwater runoff control. 
So there's already an ordinance in place for sediment and erosion control. So this is part of our sort of ongoing efforts to comply with the existing permit that's in place. Um, and it, it will continue to be a factor as we move forward. Um, fifth piece, stormwater management, new development and redevelopment. There's already an ordinance to address post-construction runoff and new development. Um, we also require submission of as-built plans upon construction completement, completion and procedures to ensure long-term operations and maintenance of stormwater systems. Um, it's very important that when folks install a stormwater system in their development that they are maintaining it properly and that's something that we need to enforce. And the sixth piece is, is what's really going to affect our operations in a big way, good housekeeping and pollution prevention. So this is where we get into street sweeping and how often we need to sweep the streets, um, cleaning of catch basins and not allowing them to get more than 50% full, uh, inspection and maintenance of all of our structures throughout the city, and I have some maps that I'm going to show you in a minute to give you an idea of the scope of the structures that we're dealing with. Okay, so catch basin cleaning. So last year, between April and October of 2016, we cleaned 1,055 catch basins, and we, ins we measured and inspected 435 of those for compliance with this new permit, as I just described. So a couple of pictures here. Um, the one on the right is, is the actual catch basin cleaner truck. Um, item of note here is, is that this truck is currently undergoing repairs. We need to uh, replace the body on it uh, because it, it had rotted out. So that's currently undergoing repairs and will be good as new shortly. Another piece of this is catch basin label installation. Um, so you will see these labels placed on catch basins. You'll see them in the downtown area in, in particular, but they're also in uh, downtown Florence and we're gonna be moving throughout the entire city time goes by. And this is just a, a public awareness piece to, to let people know, hey, this water goes to the river. So this gives you an idea of the scope of the infrastructure that we're talking about here. 5,025 catch basins and intakes, and as you can see, they're everywhere. Each one of those green dots represents a structure that we need to concern ourselves with one way or the other. This is another piece of what we do is, is uh, catch basin and drain manhole cover repairs and replacements. So a lot of times these come to us as work orders. Um, we need to repair covers or grates that have been hit or sometimes damaged in some way. Um, and it, you know sometimes it can just be visually noted damage when, when folks are driving around, but we certainly try to be aware of our structures and keep them in good working order. Um, we've, we've really been all over the place um, repairing these, uh, Federal Street, Myrtle Street, Florence Road, Masonic Street, are a few of the locations. So this is another slide, again, to just sort of show the scope of the infrastructure, 2,431 manholes, each one of those green dots is is a, a structure that we need to be concerned with the integrity of. Street sweeping. So all city streets are swept at least once a year. We run two sweepers from April to September. Um, and then we have um, areas that we sweep more frequently. The central business district is swept two times a month. Um, and also uh, for special events like after the holiday stroll. Um, as an example, our first night. Um, we do monthly sweeping in, in other areas like Florence Center and King Street, Damon Road, downtown parking lots, Leeds and Bay State Villages. Um, this, is, this is a piece with the new MS4 permit that we will need to increase the frequency of street sweeping and likely move to all city streets twice a year. So um, more infrastructure to be concerned with. Um, it's the map that shows channels and ditches, six and a half miles. So these can obviously fill with all manner of 
debris and we need to um, manage that. Um, so over the past year, we cleaned sediment and debris from but multiple locations, including Park Hill Road, Old Wilson Road, and Chesterfield Road. Outfalls. So an outfall is defined as a location where the collection system discharges to a brook, to a wetland, or to the river. And we currently do visual inspections for evidence of pollutants that may be getting into waterways that are, the, uh, which is obviously undesirable. We're looking for, you know, things like algae or unusual dry, dry weather flows. Um, if we note something like this, we have to do further investigation to, um, to determine the source and, and, and obviously the, to fix the situation. Um, th this is something, again, with the new permit, um, we are going to have to um, continue this sort of inspection and, and sampling. Flood mitigation. So we have sort of known problem areas throughout the city that we, we regularly monitor and remove debris when the time comes that, that that's necessary. Um, particularly this time of year, one of the things we have to watch for is snow and ice blocking up storm drain and that can obviously cause roadway flooding. Um, this is certainly not a comprehensive view of every trouble spot in the city, but the red dots show areas that are firmly on our radar. Um, areas like Elm Street, Church Street at King Street, um, the King Street Brook, um, Nonotuck Street. So there's, there's kind of a whole list of places that we regularly monitor because we know that historically there have been problems there. This is a slide that shows culverts in the city, each one represented by a, uh, by a dot. Um, a lot of the culverts are corrugated metal, and they're in uh, various states of disrepair. Um, it's, it's something that we need to assess for replacement. You know, can we replace it? Do we need to replace it, or can we repair it? Um, if we do need to replace it, we need to meet state stream crossing standards, and this requires uh, considerable permitting and then ultimately reconstruction. So these, these maps are just to sort of give you an idea of the scope of the infrastructure that we're talking about, all, all the things that are under our purview and, and all the things we need to be regularly monitoring. Stormwater system inspection. So this is, um, this is actually a view from the inside of our camera van. Maybe you folks have seen it driving around. It's a big orange, um, it's actually a, a converted bread truck. And it's got some uh, TV uh, cameraing equipment inside of it. Um, it's from the early 80s and is actually going to be replaced before June 30th of this year, which is, which is great. Um, but what we use it for is video inspections of drain lines throughout the city, and it helps us to identify and investigate structural failures. For example, if a sinkhole were to develop, we would use the camera van to, to investigate what caused it. Um, we also use this to inspect for possible illicit discharges, um, which again, it, it helps us to comply with the MS4 permit. So, you know, what are we looking for? Like oil, sewage, paint, chemicals, you know, things that just don't belong in the drain system. So this map shows our pipe, 124 miles of it. Um, we have various materials, um, vitreous clay, reinforced concrete, brick. Some of it dates back to the 1800s and some of it's new because we've been replacing it. Um, there seemed to be sort of a flurry of installation activity in the 1930s. Um, but, you know, what I, what I would say about this is, is that a lot of the pipe has sort of exceeded its reasonable life expectancy and can be, uh, at this point, considered antique. So, DPW crews can, can complete pipe repairs 
um, to the extent possible. And uh, over the past year, we we have complete we have been able to complete drain pipe repairs um, throughout the city. Um, locations are Acrebrook Drive, Elm Street, Elizabeth Street, Crescent Street, Massasoit Street. Um, we also have a, a contractor. We have a, a contract. We call it a deep deep sewer contract. And it, uh, we, ha we have a contractor who has the capability to come in and uh, fix problems that, that we can't reach with our equipment. King Street Brook. So King Street Brook is, is one of these locations that I spoke of earlier that's sort of firmly on our radar as, as being a problem area. So, so I, I'll speak about this a little bit too when I, when I go into the, the capital part of the presentation. Um, but in terms of operations and maintenance, you know, kind of what can we do um, the, for flood mitigation, you know, just sort of preventative maintenance stuff. Um, we inspect the King Street Brook at the bike path culvert weekly throughout the year and annually clean out the sediment basin and culvert under the bike path to maintain flow during storm events. Um, we also remove vegetation and debris um, between Barrett Street and the culvert behind CVS, clean the debris off the grate behind CVS weekly. And that's just preventative maintenance stuff that we can do until we can implement a more permanent solution which I'll discuss in a minute. So one of the other pieces that DPW is involved in is stormwater management and new development and redevelopment. Um, so we, we provide ongoing review and inspection of development projects that disturb over one acre in the city. Um, and again, this is in compliance with one of those bullet points that, that was in the MS4 permit. So these pictures are from two separate sites at Village Hill. Um, we also have a project going on on Hinkley Street, condo development, and uh, condos at the corner of Hatfield and Bridge. So project going on down on Pleasant Street, um, the old lumber yard. We are providing management and oversight of the design for reconstruction of a portion of what's called the Market Street Brook Drainage Conduit. And this is going to accommodate a proposed building development. So what you're seeing are pictures of a five foot by seven foot brick arch, and that's the drain pipe, and it's from the 1840s, and it has a wood plank floor. So it's 255 linear feet long, and that is going to be relocated and replaced with 305 feet of six foot by six foot reinforced concrete box culvert. So it's important to note that the utility is not paying for this project. It is, it is grant funded. Um, however, DPW is providing engineering oversight of the design and relocation of this. So this is just a visual representation of, of sort of what I just ran through to show you geographic locations of, of where we're sort of doing, I would call these like in-house projects. So where we are providing sort of ongoing oversight and maintenance of the King Street Brook, um, vegetation removal, as I discussed. Um, you'll see Hinkley Street in here. So that this has been a project that that has been in the works for many years, um, and it's a 2,700 foot long roadway reconstruction that includes water, sewer, and drain utilities, as well as a new 36 inch drainage outfall. And you're actually going to see that project go to construction um, a little bit later this spring. Another thing I'll note here is that uh, we did change the grading on State Street to reduce property damage in the event that the brook does flood. And this is a visual representation of our operations and maintenance in FY16. Um, and few, you know, again, as sort of as the utility ramps up, we're involved in more projects. Um, Bernash Street, um, we created a swale 
in that area to move water away from property and towards the brook. Um, you see Hinkley Street again, as this was an ongoing project. Um, various pipe repairs. You'll also see Pulaski Park in here, um, which I'll talk about in a moment. And these are some of the projects we're currently working on for FY17 or have just completed. Again, the King Street Brook is in here. A couple of pipe repairs. So a few words about the flood control system operations and maintenance. So what you see on the left is the view from the tractor that mows the, mows the levees. So we mow the levees everywhere we can reach at least once a year. And also complete routine inspections of both the Connecticut River system and the Mill River system. The pictures on the right show the trial deployments of the stop log structures, um, ones on the railroad and ones on West Street. Um, we have three stop log structures, Route 5, the railroad, and West Street, and we trial deploy one per year on a rotating basis. Okay, so now talk about capital. So this was represented as OOM in the financial slides. So King Street Brook, so again, known trouble area that we um, that we maintain to the extent possible. Um, but what we did was contracted with CDM engineering firm um, analysis and the design has been completed um, for assistance with the construction of a berm um, to mitigate King Street Brook flooding. Um, this is the area of State Street, Stoddard Street, and Church Street. So at this point, we will be applying for FEMA assistance. Woodlawn Avenue. Interestingly, this is the beginning of the King Street Brook. Um, what you will see on the left is a new catch basin that was constructed to correct brook that was flowing into the middle of the road. Now the project in Ward 2, uh, Burt's Pit Road. So the Hunt Sunset Hill section uh, roadway was in poor condition. So as part of a pavement project, we did uh, cold in place recycling. We installed a sub drain to relieve the drainage issues that were affecting the road's integrity. So what you see is some photos from the installation of that drain. Day Avenue, 900 feet stormwater pipe replacement. This is part of the paving project. So one of the things that we do when we consider capital projects is, is we try to tie them into a pavement project with other utilities. It's more efficient use of funds. So you will see construction of this um, this spring. It's out to bid right now. Another project in Ward 3, we were, uh, Eastern Ave, replaced undersized and failed drainage with new. Um, it was causing roadway and personal property flooding. Um, something interesting in the picture, that's a 10-foot diameter manhole. You can see the, the worker actually inside of it. And we installed 460 feet of new 24-inch pipe. The existing pipe was undersized. So that drain manhole actually sits on top of the piped William Street Brook. Pulaski Park, see pictures of phase one. So this included the removal and abandonment of, of most of the existing active and obsolete drainage. We installed 450 feet of new drainage. Roof drains from Memorial Hall and Academy of Music, we tied it into the new drain system. We constructed the bioswale and the stormwater garden to accept stormwater flows through the new curb cut from Main Street. Bioswale is what's called the low impact development drainage design, and that slows stormwater flows. It allows the recharge of groundwater and the cleaning of stormwater through the plant uptake before any excess water continues to the pipe drainage system. 
Oh, it's important to note that, that, that while CPA park grants and Chapter 90 money uh, paid for this project, the utility financed the stormwater piece of this, the work I just described and what you see here. <coughs> Hinkley Street. 2,700 feet of water, sewer, and drain work, and the installation of a new, or construction rather, of a new 36 inch outfall. Um, and this is part of a pavement project. Um, you will see this constructed this spring. Final plans and specs are nearly complete. We expect it to be out to bid in mid March. Florence Road, what you see pictures of is the reconstruction of two drain lines and outfalls near Scanlon Avenue. Ward 6, so this is Sylvester Road and this is what we refer to as, as country drainage. So it's sort of a series of swells and culverts, but as you saw in Previous slides, we, we still have to maintain swells and culverts as they're, they're part of our roadway drainage. So it, the improvements that we undertook here were to get the water off the road. Um, so new infrastructure installed included catch basins, manholes, um, outfall construction. We also did two culvert repairs, which you see here. Um, one of the things that, that existed in, in the, in the uh, bottom right picture was a void in the head wall, so you see repairs to that. And this is Florence Road. We rebuilt a section of the pipe system near the intersection with Ryan Road. And finally, Audubon Road. Um, this is part of pavement project. Um, again, uh, greater efficiency when you're replacing underground utilities to do it in conjunction with paving. Um, this is the, what we, what this utility is financing is design of drainage system. Um, we designed a new drainage system and we'll be uh, replacing the culvert over the Daybrook near Leeds Center. And this will be bid and constructed this spring. So as I did for the operations and maintenance, this is, this is just sort of a, a map that shows what we've done by fiscal year. So we've, we've talked about um, a couple of these. Um, Rick Drive was a failed manhole due to groundwater infiltration. We added that in. So FY16, you can see we're sort of ramping up here and we have more projects that we're doing. And this is FY17, so this is a a snapshot of the work that is currently ongoing in various stages. Flood control system capital projects. So let's we'll start with an overview of the levee system. This is a picture of the Connecticut River levee constructed in the late 1930s by the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, locations of note on here include the stop log structures, which I talked about the trial deployments that we have to do every year, as well as the pump station, which I'll talk about in a moment. This is the Mill River system. Um, items of note here again are the uh, pump station on West Street um, and the Mill River diversion. So in 2015, we needed a current survey of the entire system to indicate geographic coordinates of points of interest, uh, property boundaries, topography, and we needed to use this survey as a base for the projects that we were going to undertake to improve the flood control system. Then we undertook an assessment of the levee system as a whole. And US Army Corps works with us to uh, assess the condition of the levees and they note any issues that they find. So this is a, a bullet pointed list um, that I'll just sort of run through briefly 
of, of items that they found which were of concern that we needed to address. So we needed to look at encroachments, which are changes to the flood control system that are not reflected in the record plans. Um, we needed to look at the freeboard elevations. Freeboard is the vertical difference between the design flood elevation and the existing elevation of the levees. We looked at the West Street pump station. So there's a pump there driven by, or it's powered by a 125 gallon propane storage tank. So they requested analysis to determine if the existing station was appropriate. Um, we also looked at, uh, we also uh, undertook video inspections of the tow drain, tow drain systems, as well as levee penetrations. Um, and we had the Connecticut River, on the Connecticut River system, we had the Hockenham Road flood control pump station inspected by divers. We also did a structural and underwater inspection of the Oxbow. So as a result of these studies that we undertook, the first project that we did, uh, we, we called the Connecticut River Levee Repair Project. So this was the project that I referred to at the beginning of the presentation that we bonded for and that we made the first principal and interest payment for in FY16. So this involves sort of the reclamation of the levee, vegetation removal, Rest restoration of the crown and flood wall repairs next to the next to the pump station. So these are sort of pictures of the work in process and then after. Next project we did was to restore or was to evaluate the condition of the stop log structures uh, and then to improve them. So what you see are pictures of the railroad stop log structures as well as the Route 5 stop log structures. Um, we did a trial deployment last year of both of them and what you see is uh, new white oak timbers. And these are the buildings that stop log are stored in. So you've got some before pictures on the left hand side and those were original. And the after pictures are on the right. So in terms of anticipated future projects, um, first thing is a catch basin dewatering facility. A catch basin material dewatering facility at the DPW. So the the debris that we remove from the catch basins needs to be dewatered before we can dispose of it. So we will be looking at installing a facility uh, with built-in filtration so that the debris can be appropriately dewatered and disposed of. Um, second project we're looking at is uh, Bridge Street. Um, so we're looking at the, the area of what's called the Day Avenue Brook, and that's between the Bridge Street Cemetery and Damon Road. So we're investigating the feasibility of the relocation of what's basically cross-country drainage, and we want to get it onto Bridge Street. And this project would remove water from the William Street Brook, which is currently overloaded, and send it uh, in a more direct route to the Connecticut River. We're also looking at some debris removal from the Oxbow Bridge, which is pictured below, and we are looking at an evaluation of the flood control system, or flood control pump station, rather, that's uh, located at the wastewater treatment plant down on Hockenham Road. Um, those pumps are, uh, are quite old, and we'll be looking at the feasibility of replacement or, or upgrades in some way. And uh, that is the last slide, and I would, uh, I'd like to thank all of you, um, and I'd like to um, thank the folks at the DPW for helping to put this together. Um, I've been there since May, so this was a uh, sort of a crash course for me in the utility operations and projects, and I can't say enough about the good work that, that the people at the DPW do sort of behind the scenes um, to keep the critical infrastructure 
of the city running. It's, it's incredibly impressive. And I, I feel very privileged to work with folks who are so incredibly dedicated and knowledgeable. And, and I really thank them for their efforts and, and everything that they do.